Hi, RoboKids. Coach Jason at RoboKai here. Uh, last week in class, we talked about compound gearing. And uh, what compound gearing is, is instead of having your gears um, being linear in nature, your drivetrain being linear, where one gear is turning another, and that one's turning another, and that one's turning another, and that one's turning another, um, compound gearing is where you stack uh, multiple gears on top of each other so that you're essentially creating a new input gear every other gear you can either greatly increase the speed or the power, the torque, of your output gear by multiplying those gear ratios together. So in VEX IQ, we have uh, five different sizes of gears. We have a 12-tooth gear, we have a 24-tooth gear that's not part of this drivetrain, we have a 36-tooth gear, a 48, and a 60. And of course, those are all multiples of 12. So what we do uh, to keep things simple for the kids is we just uh, call them a one gear, a two gear, which is the 24 tooth, a three, a four, and a five. Um, those numbers are much easier to multiply and divide than, than 12, 24, 36, and so on. Um, so one of the kids uh, pointed out that if you had a 60 to one gear ratio, that's essentially a clock. Um, if the input gear is turning 60 times every time that the output gear is turning once, then this effectively becomes the second hand and this becomes the minute hand or the minute and the hour hand. He asked if he could take a stab at building a clock, at least building the minute hand um, using the parts that we had. So I uh, said, by all means, do that. There's no better way to learn how to build compound gearing and learn these principles than to put them into practice. And so, um, and he was interested in building a clock, so we, we took a stab at that, and he was able to build everything from this input gear here, the 12 tooth gear, all the way up to the 60 tooth gear, which turns the minute hand. Uh, so let me turn this on, and I've got a stopwatch here, and we're gonna look at how accurate this is. So uh, I got the, the minute hand is starting a little bit before the 12 o'clock position, so once it gets to the 12 o'clock position, I'm gonna turn the stopwatch on. I've got the stopwatch here and go. All right, so let's see how accurate the minute hand is. Got 15. Looking pretty accurate so far. And it should be at 30 once it reaches the bottom. I mean, it's pretty accurate. I'm sure it's, uh, I wouldn't want to uh, rely on anything for that, but it's uh, as accurate, I think, as plastic parts and uh, plastic motors can get. Um, so uh, when, when we first set this up, uh, the motors, I don't remember what the natural RPM of the motors is. I think it's around uh, 95 or 100 RPM. So um, what uh, the first student did on day one who built this part of the mechanism was he programmed he built a program called Clock, that you can see here, and he set the motor to 60 RPMs. And when we tested it with 60 RPMs and ran the stopwatch, we found that the minute hand was taking just a little bit longer to reach the um, one full rotation than it should. It was taking about four seconds longer to reach. So um, we, we talked about why that was occurring. Initially, he thought maybe it was just a bad motor or, or the program was wrong somehow. But um, then I got him to focus in on kind of what's happening in between these, how they're all rubbing together. And, and as soon as I said rubbing together, he said friction. So yes, for, and anytime you have friction, you're gonna lose some efficiency in your drivetrain. So as I said, it was about four seconds of uh, loss in, in efficiency. And so he compensated that by increasing the, um, the program to 64 revolutions per minute. And uh, that was, uh, much closer, still a little bit, I think a little too fast at that point. We tried 63, it was a little too slow, and you know, we're not super precise here, but we estimated that it was somewhere between 63 and 64 revolutions per minute um, would cause this to turn one complete rotation accounting for the um, friction in the system. <clears throat> so on uh, the next day, uh, another student who was going over compound gearing um, saw this uh, clock that um, had been built and asked if he could build an hour hand onto it. And so um, we talked about how you would do that. And he, in his gut instinct, was to just 
do this again because this is a 60 to 1 gear, gear ratio. So let's just add another 60 to 1 gear ratio. And, and in his mind, those two things would add up to a 3,600 to 1 gear ratio if you multiplied all, the, all those together. And, um, and technically, if you multiply uh, those numbers together, 3, 4, 5, multiplied by another 3, 4, 5, you do get 3,000. Um, 600. However, and, and this is something that we'll talk about next week, um, he does have an error here in the drivetrain that causes this to not actually be a 3,600 to 1 gear ratio. I'm not going to go into it on this video. Uh, if you spot the error, if you know how to fix the error, you can uh, uh, mention that in the comments below. But um, I do see the error and I'm going to have the students look at this and analyze it next week um, to see if they can figure out why that error is there and how they might be able to fix it. Um, there's a, and there's actually two errors. So one error is that this is not actually a 3,600 to 1 gear ratio. And the other error is that, um, well, it's not an error, but maybe it's more of a preference. In most clocks, everything moves in a clockwise direction. But um, on this clock, the the first input uh, gear actually is moving in a counterclockwise direction, but these two hands are moving in a clockwise direction. Again, I know what's going on there, and I'm going to challenge the students to see if they can figure out what's going on and, and what some possible solutions may be next week. Um, but if you have some suggestions for solutions, go ahead and put those in the comments below. And, uh, you know, I know there's more than one solution to all these problems, so it'll be interesting to see what the kids come up with on their own uh, versus what I would come up with versus, you know, what, what someone on YouTube might come up with. Um, but I, I, it's, a, it's a really cool system. Um, you know, the most important thing for us at Robokai is not the accuracy of the clock, but rather that the kids are putting into practice what they're learning about compound gearing and multiplication and division in something that we're not, I didn't ask them to build this. I, we didn't have instructions for it or anything. I just was talking about compound gearing and how that can uh, help us in robotics. And as I said, one of the students, um, you know, it just popped in his head. And, you know, these, these are 10 year old kids, nine year old kids, but they do, they do, they're very smart kids. You know, kids are, we, we don't give kids enough credit for how smart they are, but, but it just dawned on him that if he had a 60 to one gear ratio, that's a clock. And so I said, let's run with that. Um, so that's the, that's the thing that makes this kind of um, stuff fun is that the kids are learning through hands-on experience. And I promise you, the kids that are working on this, they're gonna remember gear ratios much better than they, than, than they would if we just taught it to them or showed them how it works or, or taught them in a book. So um, we're gonna work on this a little bit more and I'll probably post another video once we've, we've um, uh, addressed some of these problems that I've spotted and uh, check back and see what solution came, we came up with and how it stacks up with what you would do and uh, watch us for more videos in the future. I'm hoping to post more uh, of our mechanisms like this um, as we get into the fall season. So check us out later. Thanks for watching.